Hello all, so in this tutorial we will be discussing about reading and writing from the SD card uh, which can be interfaced with Zboard. So as you might have seen there is an SD card slot at the back of Zboard and uh, Zboard comes with an 8 GB SD card. Okay, So it comes with a Linux pre-installed. So at this point we are not planning to use Linux so we will be all writing the contents of SD card. So first thing you need to do is you save those files, those Linux files somewhere so that you can use it in the future. Okay, otherwise also you can download it later. And uh, this is the SD card. So I have removed all the Linux one. So first thing maybe you like to do is to format. And in future also, if anything goes wrong, if your computer says like it cannot open the SD card, you will have to format. And while formatting, uh, you will have to choose FAT32 file system. So as you know, if you want to read or write from any secondary memory, uh, it needs to support some kind of file system. And uh, usually uh, file systems are managed by operating system. But uh, we are going to use standalone operating system now. So you won't be getting all features of FAT file system, but we will have limited uh, features available. And those are more than enough uh, since we just want to read and write from SD card. Okay, so you'll have to uh, quickly format it. Now uh, we can use SD card for many purposes. For example, in our image processing, uh, you can use SD card for storing your image as well as for storing the processed image you can store there. And if you are using some ADC DSC application, if you want to do some data logging, uh, that data can be logged into SD card because uh, you may have uh, much more, more than your uh, DDR capacity, which is 5 to MB. So SD card, uh, it is 8 GB, which comes with third port. So you can log all your data into the SD card and uh, you can use it later by copying it to your computer. Okay, so that's the main advantage. So in the first tutorial, I'm just uh, going to show you um, read and write capabilities. For that, what I will do is I will store some image in my SD card and I will just make a copy of that uh, image. So basically I will read that image and I will make a copy which uh, constitutes both read and write operation. Okay, so again, the image I'm going to use is uh, Lena. Okay, so let's use that binary image of Lena. So I have Lena color dot bin. So this one I am copying here. Now, uh, first thing you need to remember, as I said before, uh, the capabilities of the file system available with our standalone OS is limited. So whichever file you are using, okay, so the name of that file should not contain more than eight characters. That's the first thing you need to remember. So I cannot directly use this file name when we do it on Zboard. Okay, so because Lena 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 characters in Lena underscore color. The size cannot be more than eight. So I'm just going to call it Lena C. And the extension part, it cannot be more than three characters. Okay, so we need to keep it in mind. So if you're using some TIFF image, you should not put the extension TIFF. You have to just put some TIF or something like that. Later, when you copy it to your computer, you can rename it accordingly. And uh, it supports hierarchy. That means you can have all this inside your SD card and you can keep your things inside that. But again, remember uh, the size of or the name of each directory shouldn't be more than eight characters, eight bytes. Okay, so that's the requirement. So I have just copied it uh, to my SD card and always safely eject it before putting it to our Z board. Okay, so I have taken my SD card and now I'm inserting it. To Z board. Okay, so now let's go to the software part. So this time, as I mentioned, I am just demonstrating read write capabilities. So I'm not planning to use any hardware part. So I'm just starting an SDK project. Okay. So 
So we will start a new application project. And let me call it SD test or something. Standalone. And here we choose that predefined platform because we don't have any hardware in PL part and choose empty application and choose finish. So the library is the header files for supporting this FATS file system. It, it doesn't come automatically with your BSP. Okay, so they are not included by default. So we need to explicitly include those header files, those libraries in order to support our FAT file system. So for that, you should go to BSP and under port support package settings, uh, under overview, you need to check this option, SIL FFS, okay, generic FAT file system library. Only if you check it, he will include the header files for this. Now, there are slight difference between the header files in, in 2015 and uh, later versions. So, some codes which were written before 2015 might not be working now due to slight uh, modification, but if you are starting now, no issues. Okay, so I have my folder here. So let me start a new C source. Let me call it stdest.p and finish. So I already have the code. I will just copy paste it and we'll try to explain to you. Okay. So here, Okay, already some functions are written. So you can see there is a function called SD init. This function basically mounts your SD card. Okay, and there is a path here. So this is like the drive name for your SD card. You can give any any uh, character there. Uh, not only zero, you can call it A, B, whatever drive name you need. And this guy, he mounts the SD card. He takes one parameter, which is a pointer to FATFS which is a structure representing a uh, FAT file system, okay, structure. So these things coming from this header file, ff.h. So we have included that header file here. And uh, as I mentioned before, by default, this header file is not included in BSP, only when you check that option, like in include uh, Silings file system, uh, this will be coming into our BSP. So remember to check that option. Okay, so here is the function for mounting. Here is the function for unmounting. Uh, function names are same here. Only difference is for unmount, the first uh, parameter will be a null pointer. So we just use zero there. And uh, so called the path, it should match in both places. And this is the function for reading from SD card. And this is the function for writing to SD card. Okay, so again, these are abstract function. For reading, you just have to provide a name of the file which you want to read, the full path to that file, and the starting address in your DDR memory where that data should be kept. Okay, so this will be read like a binary file, byte by byte, and it will be kept uh, starting from this address, and he is going to read the entry file. You don't have to specify the file size here. Okay, if you want to read exact file size and all, these are the low level function actually. This f read function, which is coming from this ff, you can use this function. So it basically takes a pointer to your function, like our standard c actually, very similar, but uh, data types are slightly different. And you need to again provide the destination address. And here you can specify how many bytes he is supposed to read from the file. And this is a pointer uh, which you need to provide. Okay, so what he does is how much data he exactly read will be updated to this variable using this point. That's what he's going to do. Because this function, it needs to return two things. He needs to uh, return the status of file read operation as well as how much byte was transferred. So that's why they have done like this. 
Okay, so it is returning the status here and how much byte he transferred it will automatically reflect in this variable and uh, you need to check the status after each operation so we have the function to open the file we have the function fc to go to the beginning of the file and this is for file read and this is for file close okay so this is for reading file similarly writing file you have to specify again name of the file uh, how much data you want to write to the file in bytes and the starting address of DDR from where you want to write. So basically uh, for writing to a file first we'll store data in DDR then we'll transfer it to the file and for reading from file first we'll transfer data from SD card to DDR then later from there we will use it. That's the strategy. So our traditional maybe fprintf, fscanf, these things are not directly available. Again on this embedded platform that doesn't make sense also. Okay, so we always process data in memory and finally if you want to log all the data you just uh, dump it to the SD card. Similarly if you want to uh, process data from SD card in one shot you read all the data to the memory then we process in the memory. That's the strategy. Now in the main function you can see first we need to initialize the sd card then we are reading the file okay so as i mentioned before name of the file is now lency.bin uh, i guess that's the name i gave and second let's check Okay, I gave Lena C.pin, so we need to give that name here. Okay, let's call it Lena C.pin, and uh, we are reading it and we are storing it in this buffer. Okay, and the buffer is large enough to store the entire image, vital by vital times three. And here, I am reading the same data from the memory and I am writing to the SD card using the write file thing. So let's call it Lena duplicate. And after that, we are just ejecting SD card and we say like that. Okay, so make sure your board is connected and run configuration. Post config is not needed here because we don't have any PL. And here we need to check. And let's run. Okay, here done print is coming, which is this last print. That means he might have successfully read the file to memory, and from memory, he might have. Uh, return it back to the SD card. So let's put SD card back in my computer and let's see. And you can see like, yeah, Lena D is here. Now you'll notice he always writes the file name in capital letters. It doesn't matter whether you specify it in small letter or capital letter. He's always going to save it using capital letter. And these two files are exactly same. You can see the size and if you want, we can check the content also. Yeah, E28970, which is same as our original image. E28970. Okay. Now, sometimes you might be getting errors when you are doing it, and uh, he will return some error code. So, all this operation you can see like uh, it is returning some value, and by looking at that value, you will be able to find out what the error is for example let me uh, try to read a file called lena.bin which doesn't exist so let me try to run again and let's see the output and he's saying like error f open returned 4 okay now these uh, error codes they are also stored in ff.h and by looking at the error code you will be able to find out uh, what is causing that error? Okay, so you have to look at this F result one declaration, and that is where the errors are. So these are the possible errors. So four means 
could not find the file that means there is something wrong in the file name okay now if you uh, okay let me try to put a large name lena color dot bin Now f open return six. Now if you look at the code for six, f are invalid name. Path name format is invalid. Okay, so this is the error you are going to get if the file name is more than eight characters. And if it is less than eight character and still if he cannot find, you will get this error. So it is important to look at these error codes to find out uh, what is going wrong. Okay, so that is also in this f of dot h. You will look for this f result. Uh, uh, type definition and from that you can find it out okay so that's the main thing now what what i'll do is i will uh, do the same tutorial the previous one where we read the image we processed it in pl we converted into grayscale then we scaled it uh, same tutorial i am attempting the only difference is this time i am not using xsst or you are or anything like that to transfer my image i'm going to read the same image which is currently in sd card let us see that image and i will transfer that image to my pl and the output of processing will be stored back into sd card and we will use that sd card later in your computer to check whether things really worked or not okay so that code again i already have I will just show you and I will share, share the source code also. So there is no difference in the hardware part. We are going to use the exact same hardware. So I don't have to regenerate the bitstream or anything. I have just changed my software code. So in software, what I have done is the functions that I showed you just now, init, eject, read, write. I have moved them to a header file here and uh, the function definitions i have moved to a c source code here okay so that's the only difference so that in the top file i just include sd card dot h this header file which internally includes that f of dot h so here also make sure uh, under board support package under settings you check this option otherwise it will give compilation time error Okay, so here let's see what happens. So the first part is exactly same. I'm initializing the DMA controller and here I'm initializing the SD card. And this is where we are configuring that rescale IP. And here I'm just printing the addresses of input and output. Okay, same as before. But previously here there was a scanf and uh, which will wait for me to transfer the image data through the XSSD interface. Now that is gone. I don't want. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use this read file which we discussed before for reading the file from SD card. So now it is lena c. That is the file name. So I am reading it and I am storing that data in this buffer input image. Then I use that buffer for DMA, which is same as before. So previously, data was coming to this buffer through XSSD interface. Now it is coming from the SD card. So we send it uh, to the hardware, to the PL. He might have processed. That we'll know after this line. That means he finished processing. And once he finished processing, what I will do is I will take that processed image. Where is the processed image sitting? That is sitting here in this buffer output image so i will take it from there and i'm going to store it in sd card and i'm going to call it len g dot bin okay okay now well, you can call it lena g dot bin grayscale because uh, after processing it will be grayscale and the size will be like uh, one by fourth of the initial image because our scaling factor is two and once it is done, we will just eject the SD card and we'll just print. Okay, so let me run.
and you can see like everything happened okay input address output address here i am just printing it just to make sure he successfully transferred uh, data from sv card to the memory and you can see like it is e28970 which is image data okay so that print is coming from here so he successfully transferred and he prints dma success and done so if i check my sd card now i should be able to see this file lena g.bin okay so let's check yeah here it is lena g.bin and the file size is only 64 kb because we already scaled it and let's check whether the output is right or wrong so let me copy it let's take matlab let's take our print let's take our script to check it so it is called lena g.bin everything else is same 56 256 and j scale and you can see the output which is the right hand so I hope this will be useful to you and this will be useful to us for many future tutorials also. So I'll again share the source code. So please try yourself.